Hey folks, in this video, we're going to take a look at the local G500 settings file setup. So with no further ado, let's jump in. We'll take a look. The local G500 settings, including serial ports, network configuration, time settings, administrator user management, etc., are managed using either the MCP local configuration utility, MCP CFG, or the MCP settings GUI. The functionality of the system is identical when settings are performed, the only difference being one is a shell-based interface and the other is a web-based interface. To launch the MCP CFG, one, use a terminal emulator connected to the G500 shell, either via the front USB port or using an SSH port 22 connection. Two, start a terminal session and log into the G500 with an administrator level or root user account. Three, at the command line prompt, enter sudo MCP CFG and the user password when prompted. The MCP settings GUI is a web-based interface equivalent of the MCP local configuration utility or MCP CFG. To launch the local MCP settings GUI, one, connect an available mouse, keyboard, and monitor to the G500. Two, once the G500 is powered up and has a valid license installed, click on the MCP name via the taskbar. Three, click system settings. Four, a default web browser will be open showing the MCP settings login screen. To launch the remote MCP settings GUI, one, use a supported web browser, disable proxy, and type the G500's IP with port 8081 into the address bar and press the enter key. The user will be required to confirm the security certificate exception. Two, the MCP settings login screen is now displayed. This presentation presents settings workflows based on the web-based settings GUI interface hereafter. When you log into the G500 for the first time, follow steps below to complete the initial setup. One, use the default DEF admin account, username, DEF admin, and password DEF admin to log in. Two, once logged in as a DEF admin user, you'll then be prompted to create an administrator account to access the full settings GUI. On the gateway settings main menu, select the configure authentication, then administrator group users tab, and then select the add user tab to create administrator level users. The DEF admin account will be removed the next time you log in with the newly created user and are signed out of all DEF admin sessions. Three, the default enabled configure network port is net one with 192.168.168.81/24 as the IP address and can be used as such. If it's required to change the default IP address and or to configure additional network ports, you can navigate back to the main menu, then select the configure network interfaces to do so. Please check the configure network interfaces section coming up later in this video for the detailed steps. Four, after you complete the above workflow, select the reboot device to reboot the device for the changes to take effect.
After you complete the first time login workflow, the next step to be performed is to set the G500's internal date and time, as well as modify options associated with time synchronization. To do so, log in using the newly created admin username and password, and then select the configure time and time sync tab. One, Select the Set System Time Zone tab and then select the Set Time Zone tab to configure the G500 to the same time zone as a remote PC. This should be the first step to be performed when configuring date and time settings. Two, go back to the Configure Time and Time Sync tab and select the Set System Clock tab, enter today's date and remote PC to set the system clock. Three, go back to the Configure Time and Time Sync tab, and then select the Select Time Source Clock tab, and then select the IRIG B tab in this example, then select the Enable Disable tab to switch the mode accordingly. You can also select the IRIG B format to select the required format and activate it. Now reboot the device for the changes to take effect. The G500 supports a default root user that is used to connect to the device from the serial maintenance port. The default password for the root user is GE root. The root account password must be changed by end users. To change the root account password, select Configure Authentication from the main menu, then select the Root Administrator Settings tab. Click Change Root Password to change the password associated with the system root user account. Once the new password is confirmed, a pop-up window will appear showing the operation status successfully changed password for user colon root. The G500 provides one front maintenance Ethernet port, Net0, and six independent rear Ethernet ports, Net1 to Net6, accessible via SFP modules. The SFP types are detected automatically in the G500 after startup and reboot. No SFP configuration is needed. 
The G500 supports three modes of network operation. At the FPGA level, six rear ports are grouped together into three pairs. The front port cannot be grouped with the rear ports. Supported network modes are classified as single mode, redundant mode, and PRP mode. In this example, we'll configure the static adapter IP address for Net3 to work as a single mode. One, select the Configure Network Interfaces tab from the main menu, and then select the Network Interfaces Net3-Net4. Two, select Single if the current Net3-Net4 mode is not single. Three, then select the current Edit Configuration tab, and then select the Net3 tab. 4. Select the Static IP Address tab, and then select the Configuration Adapter IP Address tab. 5. Enter the IP address and subnet mask, and then click Confirm. 6. Click Yes to confirm the newly configured Static IP settings. 7. Navigate back to the main menu and select the Reboot Device tab to reboot the device for the changes to take effect. The G500 has eight built-in serial ports available as RJ45 connectors on the rear of the unit and an additional 4, 8, or 12 can be configured through the PCIe expansion slots. The serial ports support the following communication modes, RS-232, RS-422, RS-485 4-wire, and RS-485 2-wire. To configure the serial port, select the configuration serial ports, then select the desired port mode and its termination, if applicable, and then click Apply. A reboot is required to apply any serial port changes. All serial port configurations persist through a power cycle and when the power is lost. The G500 requires the installation and configuration of the optional D.20 HDLC PCIe card to communicate with the D20 peripheral modules. The D.20 HDLC PCIe card has two D.20 ports. For D.20 port A, the signals are always available. For D.20 port B, the connection for the D.20 channel 1 and D.20 channel 2 are configurable. End of link termination on the D20 channel 1 and D.20 channel 2 are also configurable. To configure the D.20 HDLC PCIe card, select the Configure D.20 port settings. If no D.20 HDLC cards are installed, the message, there are no D.20 HDLC cards installed, appears. If the D.20 HDLC card is installed, proceed to set the parameters as needed and click Apply if changed.
Lastly, I want to thank you for watching this training content video. And if you're looking for more great content, take a minute and check out the Resources Hub on the GE website. You can do that by typing resources.gegridsolutions.com into your browser or just click the link in the description of this video and it'll take you right there. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.